Hey everyone, Season of Discovery is a version of Classic WoW filled with important choices to make throughout your journey in Azeroth. Today, I'm gonna help you avoid some traps, pitfalls, and common mistakes that you as a player will likely fall into and help you save a lot of time and gold in the process. As of the time of making this video, Phase 2 is releasing in just a few days, and although Blizzard talked a lot about what's coming in Phase 2, there's still a lot we don't know about. That being said, there's a lot of things we learned throughout Phase 1 of SOD that will Will definitely still be applicable in phase 2 and in any future phase of the game in fact. So sit back, relax, and let's talk about 7 mistakes you need to avoid doing in Season of Discovery. First off, let's talk professions. Since the release of phase 1, Blizzard has put a big emphasis on professions for Season of Discovery. They want professions to feel meaningful and to be an important part of the game, as important as any other system. For that reason, in phase 1, we saw some big items being added to every profession. Items that were very often best in slot or that played a big role in increasing your character's power. And with no surprise, for Phase 2, it seems like Blizzard is doubling down on that. We've seen some very big and strong items added to the main crafting professions, those being leatherworking, blacksmithing, and tailoring. But unlike Phase 1, it seems like Blizzard is taking it one step further. Even professions that usually only think of as consumable professions, like alchemy or enchanting, are getting some very strong items specifically for those who have them. And I bet there's more things that are coming to those professions that we don't know about yet. The point is here, you should definitely not neglect professions. They've been very important in the past and they will probably continue being important way into the future. You should definitely do some research first to know which profession best fits you though. Because while Blizzard made professions stronger, they also kind of locked your choice of which profession to go for. If you're a warrior, now you need blacksmithing. If you're hunter, you need leatherworking, etc. But there is one profession that has been in that boat all the way back from vanilla, and it's kind of the best second profession to have for everyone. Now of course talking about engineering. Engineering has and probably will continue being the best profession to have if you're looking to do some big numbers. Be it in PvP, raiding, or dungeons, engineers have always had access to some crazy items that help them throughout Classic, TBC, Wrath, and now even in Season of Discovery. And unfortunately, this also kind of locks your choice for a second profession. Of course, if you don't care about doing big numbers and you just want to pick a profession because you like it or because you want to make gold, go for it. Personally, I don't even have engineering on my main. I have enchanting because I like to be able to disenchant stuff whenever I don't need it anymore. That being said, if you are serious about doing damage, engineering coupled with that second main crafting profession, whatever it is for your class, is the way to go. Next, let's talk reputations. Now, back in classic, reputations never really played that big of a role in the game. Outside of some attunements or some very niche previous items, you never really had to level up any any reputation. They were kind of a gimmick, but with Season of Discovery, that's very much changing. First, of course, we have PvP reputations. In Phase 1, the Silverwing Sentinels slash Warsong Outriders reputation played a big role in the game. For one, those unlocked the only mounts obtainable at the time in the game. They also gave some incredibly powerful gear pieces, and even a weekly world buff. This reputation, and all of its rewards, was also the only thing keeping the Horde and the Alliance at each other's throats constantly thanks to the PvP event. In Phase 2, Blizzard mentioned that there will be new quests that will help you earn Arathi Basin Rep tied to the Stranglethorn PvP event. The Arathi Basin Rep itself only has level 58 and 60 items on it, which we obviously can't equip yet, but maybe we get some new level 40 items added to it, who knows. And I bet in future phases there will also be a PvP event that will give rep with Alterac Valley, and AV has its fair share of strong items too. The point is, don't sleep on PvP reps. And then of of course, Season of Discovery has its own new reputation, the Azeroth Commerce Authority slash Durotar Supply Logistics. This reputation was locked to Honored in Phase 1, and it will probably go to Revered in Phase 2, but it had a rune locked behind it for every class in the game. We will talk more about runes in a minute, but you should definitely seek to get every rune unlocked. This isn't classic anymore where classes are the way they are. Blizzard is constantly tweaking classes, and they very often do it with runes. A rune that is meh 
at right now is only one hotfix away from being the best for your class. But to go back to the supply reputation, this reputation is leveled by turning in way late supplies. Those are items that you randomly find throughout the world that you have to go back to a capital city to turn in. You can either fill them up with whatever they ask for for increased rewards, or just turn them as is for significantly less rep. Now, this is a mini mistake of its own to talk about, because turning in way late supplies the minute you receive them was important in phase 1, but it's even more important in phase 2 now. Because Blizzard mentioned that they are adjusting way late supplies so that, quote, there will be a significant increase in experience gained from them on turn in. Now, because way late supplies are unique, and Blizzard doesn't seem like they are changing this anytime soon, going to the closest capital city and turning in those way late supplies the minute you get them has never been more important. It is very frustrating to drop everything you're doing to go back to your capital city just to turn in one item, but at least now this decision will make a bit more sense given that you will also earn a big chunk of XP by doing this. Now, as of now, we don't know whether filling those supplies affects how much XP they give. I would guess it does, but in general, even if it's just for the rep, try to always fill in those crates whenever you can. Some of them are way cheaper to fill than others, but if you really can't afford to do it, you can always go ahead and turn them in as they are. The most important thing here is that you don't want to keep a crate in your bags and not be able to pick a new one once it drops. Speaking of gold, let's move into our next mistake, not being mindful with gold. So, in phase 2, the max level is 40, and when you say level 40, you also say mount. Now, I'll be honest, this used to be a way bigger mistake to make in Classic than it is in Season of Discovery. Back in Classic, mounts were a serious investment. Of course, there was the level 60 mount, which cost a whopping 1000 gold, but even at level 40, mounts would set you off 100 gold, which was not easy to get by level 40 if you weren't being careful with where you were spending your gold. Thankfully, now in Season of Discovery, mount cost have significantly decreased. If you're not honored with your race faction and below PvP rank 3, the price for the skill plus the mount is now only 50 gold instead of 100. If you're honored and rank 3, that goes down to 40 gold. And 40 or even 50 gold is way easier to get by level 40 than 100 gold. Also, the reason it used to be so important to get a mount the minute you reached 40 is because you still had 20 levels to go before you reach endgame. And having a mount at 40 was so important important because it significantly increased the speed it took to level. In phase 2 of SOD, obviously endgame is level 40. There is still a lot to do once you reach 40, and having a mount ASAP will definitely help you a lot, but whether you reach Nomer in 10 versus 15 minutes isn't gonna make that big of a difference. Also, the economy in Season of Discovery is very very different than how it was in Classic back in 2019. You could just stumble on one Swift Thistle now, and that would give you a whopping 20 25 silver. Getting gold for your mount is way faster than it used to be in Classic WoW. With all that said, should you still be careful with your gold to be sure you have enough by level 40 to afford your mount right away? 100%. Just know that it's not as big of a deal now if you can't do that right away, because it doesn't really matter that much. And you'll probably get that gold in no time by doing a few quests at max level anyways. Speaking of quests, the max level being 40 in phase 2 also means we will start seeing some important quest rewards decisions that will be thrown at us. Now, real quick, there's the items that everyone already knows about that you should never delete, but I'll go over them quickly here. You have Carrot on a Stick, which is a very important item to always keep on yourself whenever you're going anywhere and definitely never throw away, and yes, it is obtainable at 40. School of Impending Doom, which is very useful if you do PvP to break some CC effects, also obtainable at 40, and Nifty Stopwatch, which is another useful PvP item. I'm probably forgetting some items like these, and they're will be more coming in phase 3 and beyond, so drop it in the comments if you can think of anything. But the main thing I wanted to mention here was more about the quest reward choices that could potentially be very strong for your class, but that you could pick randomly without thinking much about it and mistakenly skip a pre-raid bis piece of gear. The one example that comes to mind is of course the Whirlwind Axe for Warriors. I'm almost certain this axe is gonna be pre-raid bis in phase 2. Now it's not like the other weapons here are bad. They are all within a few percents of each other in terms of power, but the axe is definitely the best choice to make here. And the thing is, this is the only example I can think of, but this type of choice could be important for your class with some other quests, especially once you start getting
getting closer to max level. Now I'm certain that No More Again will contain most if not all the best in slot pieces at level 40. At least I hope it does. So those quest rewards I'm talking about would only be pre-raid bis at best. But still, if it's pre-raid bis for you, then you should pick wisely. Here's one rule of thumb you should keep in mind. As you're getting closer to level 40, say level 35 and beyond, start picking items specifically for the spec you're gonna play at max level. If you're gonna be a healer, always pick the healing items. If you're gonna be a DPS, always pick the DPS items, etc. That way you should be able to avoid making a mistake here. And again, it's just pre-rate bis and it's not that big of a deal either way as I said. Lastly, let's talk about runes. I mentioned runes and the importance of unlocking all of them earlier in this video, but to explain why exactly I think that it's so important, we need to look at how classes have been treated in Season of Discovery so far. Blizzard mentioned before the release of SOD that they are looking to be quite hands-off as far as tweaking classes for Season of Discovery. That, however, couldn't have been further from the truth as far as what happened. We've seen tens if not hundreds of changes to every class in the game. The reality is, SOD is an evolving game and Blizzard needs to keep tweaking classes, otherwise things will go south quite fast. And when it comes to class changes in SOD, Blizzard very often does that by changing runes themselves. We've seen many changes to runes in Phase 1. Some runes that were the best became the worst overnight, and vice versa, runes that used to be looked down upon became the best after one hotfix. And that's why you should seek to unlock basically every rune in the game. Not only is that gonna help you be more versatile with your class, but that's also gonna help you easily stay on top of the meta if that's something you're looking for. And that's about everything I have for you today. As I said, this video was written a couple of days before Phase 2 released, but I feel like the tips mentioned here can be applied to any future phase of the game. Let me know what you think of what was mentioned here in the comments, and if you have some tips of your own you'd like to add. Maybe I could do a part 2 of this in the future. With that, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe as there will be more content like this in the future. My name is Numidia and I will see you guys again very soon. Bye for now.